Hello and welcome to my third video. My name is Bronson and today I'm going to show you how to turn any picture into a t-shirt design, poster design, or just any type of, any type of graphic. So let's get into it. We're gonna do this picture of Norman here, the cutest wiener dog ever. And we're going to turn it into something that looks like this. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to copy the image always. Always, always. Now we are going to convert to smart object. Then we are going to come over here and we are going to br add brightness contrast adjustment layer. From there, I'm going to crank brightness all the way up and drop the contrast. So if you are pumping up the brightness and you're clipping pixels or blowing out highlights, don't go that far. Don't go up to 150 if that starts to happen. Go up to that point. So I'm not really blowing out any detail. I'm not really clipping a bunch of pixels. So I'm okay here to do this for this image. Now, next thing I'm going to do is add a black and white adjustment layer. So now, this is probably where you'll spend most of your time when you're doing this technique. And how you wanna think about doing this, and hopefully this will make more sense as we do it, is turning certain colors from the image into whites, grays, and blacks. And you can do this process multiple times to get certain details into whites, grays, or blacks. So this first time we're gonna do it, I'm gonna focus on trying to get some whites from Norman and the leaves. So I'll plug in these values that I um, saved here, because I did this before with this image. Okay, so now you can see how there's, Norman has some whites on his head, around his eyes a little bit, and some of the leaves. Perfect. So now, next step here is to posterize. So this, I like to do three, and this is why we want to think about it in turning colors and details into whites, grays, and blacks. So, now that it's been posterized, next step here is to select color range. I'm gonna choose the whites here, then Option Command J or Control J, or Option Control J if you're on a PC, and I'm going to name that whites layer zero. I really highly recommend that you name your layers appropriately, because if you do this a lot, if you add lots of layers, it can get confusing really fast. So I'm gonna save that layer zero, duplicate it, except name this one layer one, then turn those off. So now this is gonna allow me to redo this black and white step. So now I wanna get a little bit more details from the leaves, but turn them into grays to get some of like that darker shade of green or maybe some of the other shadows of Norman in there. So, I will plug in these values here. Cool. Alrighty, now you can see how that there are more dark grays, and that is what I'm going to go after and click on there to get the grays. Awesome. Same thing, Option Command J. Now I'm gonna name that grays layer one just to keep everything straight. Turn that off and then swap those layers and then there we go. So the next step here is to add a background. Oops. And you can jump to straight naming the background as you make the layer by hitting option and the new layer button, which is kind of nice. Oops, wrong click there, edit, fill. Okay, I'm gonna, I like purples and blues scheme, so I'm gonna use that. Now, to change the colors of the layers, I'm going to select the image, or the layer, blending options, color overlay, bam. I'm gonna do the same thing for the grays, but this time with a, a little bit more of a blue, darker blue, three, seven, five, five, six, C. All righty. There we go, so now, there's just too much. It's kind of blurry back here, it doesn't look very good. This can happen if you have um, a lot of depth of field going on, so you have something in focus and stuff's all blurry in the background. This is why some of that back is kind of blurry and this is more sharp. So I'm actually gonna go through here and delete all of this with my eraser. 
between the erasing details and the part where you're switching the blacks and whites to bring out certain colors and details, that's probably where you're gonna spend most of the time when you're doing this technique. Nope. Remembering to let go often, so if I make a mistake, I don't have to redo everything that I just did. Alrighty, that's it. So now we have the details that I want. So there's a good amount of the whites, which is what's originally coming from the reds and the yellows and the greens, blown out to be white to get Norman's forehead and some details in the leaves. Then I did the same black and white step, but instead focused on getting some of them, some of the darker shades of green, the darker shades of Norman to add this darker blue. So now what you can do, which is totally optional, if you zoom in here, you can see it a little better. It's kind of sharp. Um, if you like that, totally cool. Sometimes though, just to make it a little easier on the eyes, I'll add very, very small amount of Gaussian blur, maybe a pixel or less. And there we go, it just kind of softens out with still preserving the kind of uh, pixelated look, but makes it a little easier to look at. So that's it, I hope this has been fun for you. I hope this has been beneficial for you. I hope you end up using this technique. And if you do, please send me, I want to see what you come up with. So uh, it's not the most flashy and amazing technique Photoshop can do, but it's fun, it's quick, it's easy to learn, and it has pretty cool results. So again, if you end up using it, please share with me the results, and I love to see them. Comment below if you like this. If you didn't like this, that's okay too. I just wanna know, and um, see you next time.